All right, we're going to plan and design a table that's going to have mul multiple functions. First, it's going to store under the couch, and I'll kind of show you how we got that kind of set up to do. Um, we're going to eat off it. We have to be able to play cards on it, and it needs to be able to break down and then spread apart so that it can function as an extension of the bed that we're going to create here. So we have to do sort of design some sort of leaf table with fold up legs. I don't know how we're going to do that, but we'll figure it out. So this is the couch that built, again, always that challenge of trying to find uh, and you kind of look at the plans, but then you got to figure it in the space, and you got different variables of how you're going to do it. So uh, I originally thought about the slide-out one for a bed, but then that didn't really convert into a table, and I figured I did want the table. Not that we'll always use it. I imagine if it's just Julie and I or just myself, we'll kind of sit over here at the, the breakfast nook, which is covered with a mess right now. That project. Um, although I think I'm going to incorporate this table into that process as well. But So this is kind of the area... You know, a lot of times it's more than just me and Julie. You know, the river community is pretty, is pretty uh, gregarious. <laughs> is word? I don't know. We kind of like to hang out with each other, so I don't want that bigger table. So I don't know. But this, uh, this folds up, and I built these brackets in it here so I can slide that table right in there. And so that's going to be the process. And then eventually I'll organize this a little bit better so the storage under there. But uh, So the table will pop out, legs will fold, stand up, or... Um, you can pull it apart, put some extra leaves in, and I can store there as well. So the table needs to be able to slide out, legs fold down, pop up, and then um, if it uh, not going to be used as a table, so it needs to bend because, again, I don't have enough room here with just the table. I still have more room to make up over here. Um, so that way I'd have to use a leaf, I think, to spread out um, so that it will sit on a lip here and a lip there and provide... Uh, a resting spot for our for our guest for the evening or guests all right I guess we gotta plane up some wood Okay, we're going to make our slats here, but it's going to sit on top of the couch there and fold up, but then um, slide out. So like this, driving around or sitting during the day, it's a couch, and then, I don't know, someone comes and drinks too many margaritas, and like, whoo, presto, it turns into a bed. So something like that. Um, so we're going to calculate, a little fussy there. How many slats you need? So we've got 46 inches and a half across and um, usually use like one by fours, which are really three quarters by three and a half. Uh, and I, you want, I think, a decent amount of space um, between them for a couple different reasons. One, I think really want airflow up there here, you know, with condensation and then again, a mattress sitting right against um, a flat surface without any breathing kind of, you know, can, can have some mold issues, um, but I don't want it too tight. Uh, well, uh, um, also and also, so it, it'll slide out. Like if it's too tight, it'll bind up and catch. So um, a three and a half. I thought, well, a quarter inch maybe that's a little too narrow. So let's go three eighths instead. And so what we'll do is so that's three and seven eighths. So I got my handy dandy fractions calculator. It's an app on this phone. It actually works great. So I'm going to go forty six and one half. Divided by uh, three and seven eighths, and uh, oh, that equals twelve exactly. Um, if it me, if it had like something like I don't know nine point eight, probably what I would have done is I would have divided the forty six and a half by nine and eight, and I would have got the other dimension, and then I just would have ripped the slats that that width, and it would have worked out. So 
That's how I do stairs, actually. Usually it's kind of the same way. All right. So we need 12 of them at three and a half. And that will give us the three-eighths gap in between each one of the ones. Does it? Because you're going to have less gaps. I don't know. We'll see. If I have to rip another one down a little bit, I can. All right. 12 of them. All right, I've laid them all out here, and uh, I think the trap with this sometimes is, you know, screwing the wrong slats into the wrong, you can see the two supports there. I made this out like my model here, so you've got the, uh, you know, the ends on one side and the ends on the other, so I ripped these out of like inch and a half pine. Um, I, again, I just had this pine laying around, so I figured I'd use it for some... Not gonna be able to see it anyway. I'm a little, I almost went with oak on, on these just because I figured it'd be a little stronger, but I had the pieces I kind of already there. I figured I might as well use them. So, uh, in order, so anyway, so here's, here's the material, and every other one is going to be screwed in differently. So, I've marked them with some blue tape here, so that way I know, um, and once I get my pattern down, you know, I'll make sure I screw them to the right spot. So, um, now we have to have. The screw pattern here will, the blue ones will be screwed way up here at the end, and then on the second one from the end here, while the other one, the B ones, will be screwed here on the second one, and then this one way out at the end. So I'm going to pre-drill these so I don't split this pine. Got my drill press set up here. I've got a fence in the back and then a stop block here so I can just slide this in. That's going to put the holes exactly where I need it. Um, I have to do um, all of them on this side and then I have to reset the depth because uh, these holes are close to the edge and I'll redo those. i uh, got all my blue tape ones first and I'll just try to keep them separate so I don't screw it up. Well, it reduces the odds of screwing it up anyway. So. All right, now this gets to be the tricky part, is making sure which slats get screwed to which rail. And so, like I said, I've, I know I'm going to alternate, and I put blue tape on the ones um, that are going to well, alternate, so I know which ones are alternating. And then I put a piece of blue tape on this rail and this rail to remind me that that's the rails that these ones get screwed to, and the other ones get screwed to the other one. Um, I suppose you could just write like an A and a B on there, um, but I don't have to go sand it off afterwards, even though it's probably not a big deal. It's going to be under the couch. No one's going to see it, but that will probably be the easiest thing. Because the other part of me is just tempted to get some, like, just throw some glue on there and just finish nail it. First, well, I'm not going to go anywhere other than pre-drill everything, but I already started pre-drilling it. So. so that's what we're going to do. So hopefully uh, the blue tape will remind me which one goes which, and, again, will reduce the odds of completely screwing it up. See how it goes. Spacer stick. All right, now the moment's truth. We get to see if it opens. <laughs> it's kind of a, it's a tight fit. It's got to open.
And where it does open is just sort of a tight fit. Smooth is good. So what I might do is just take some uh, belt sander and just sand that end a little bit so that will be a little smoother. Alright, so uh, I've sanded down the edge of those uh, the slats and then put a handle on there and that actually pulls out uh, pretty good now. So now I have to deal with the issue of the table. Um, that again, I want to have the table, um, but I can't get it wide enough to, you know, this doesn't slide out wide enough to go all the way across the bus. And the table, I can't fit it under the seat um, wide enough that it needs to span the rest of the distance. So I need to make a, a, a leaf table essentially that I can make smaller and slide under the bench there, um, but also widen out. So, I'm going to actually create my own table slides with just some of these drawer slides that I have. Uh, again, trying to do as much of this project with stuff I have laying around. And so i got to cut out basically a recess there and this is going to sit inside that and then another piece will go on like this and this will allow the table to open up and slide. So I originally thought about using my table saw with a, uh, a dado blade on it, but I already had a three quarter inch bit on my uh, router table so I think I'm just going to use that and carve out the um, the center of this, the recess, so I can drip that slide in there. So I basically just sort of centered, found the center of this measure for the center of this board and then the center of this and then drew my lines on it and that'll get me set up for the for the router process. <laughs> The sliders will fit in there like that, but I want to now double these up so that I can put holes in here to drill through or up through, however you want to look at it, um, to attach this to the table. So I got double it. So I pre drilled some holes here. Oops, not that one. This one. And I'm going to glue and screw this together, and this will end up being one hole slider unit with the other side going like that that's heavy <laughs> okay i gotta drill some uh, countersink holes here so that when i bring the screws up underneath the screw into the table that it's the right depth so that the screws don't punch through the bottom of the of the table <clears throat> i'm gonna use these two inch craig screws because i have them and uh, i do like their bigger heads on them so uh this is kind of a, a bit of a tricky hole the drill because you're drilling through a lot of material and it's uh oops. um you're gonna keep it perfectly plumb so i just clamped a four by four to the back of my <clears throat> uh drill press to use as uh, a fence and then uh clamped the piece down there to try to keep it moving and i and i preset the preset the depth so it'll stop at the right spot so hopefully that will work All right, we'll put this slide together. So take it apart, push that lever there. I'm gonna set this flush up against the top and all the way to the back so I can be consistent with the other one. These little tiny screws. Top on. It's gonna go like that. Correct. Rotate. I made little marks there, so I know where to put it. They don't manipulate shapes very well in my head, so I have to <laughs> lay it out exactly where it's gonna be. All right. Now put it. 
them together. Presto. We have a table slide. Sweet. But I got the slides built and they are here to my my two outside leaves of the table. And uh, I just made this little tiny sled out of some square MDF. I want to make sure that these stay parallel so that the rails and the slides work right. So I um, just push them tight up against that rail. And now I'll just screw them into the table and hopefully I calculated that width correctly. <laughs> these don't go poking through the other side, which would make me really depressed. address the leg issue this is where I need to if I spend more time in the design phase or if I was better at like really kind of figuring out how it was all gonna work before I started building just had a hard time working though. I was thinking well I'll put folding legs somehow but if I had to do that I have to build something way up here so they would fold down on top of these sliders which is gonna be kind of a hassle and it wouldn't be, it'd be too wide if I have them fold this way. So I'm gonna have to rethink that plan. So I think what I'm gonna do is get some screw in legs, put screw in legs at each of the corners. And that way when I wanna store it, I just unscrew the legs. I think that's, I think that's gonna be the plan. So I think screw in legs would look better round than square, and all I have is square stock. So. I'm going to have to go find some round stock. So I have these threaded inserts here. And uh, I'm going to drill a hole into these little blocks that I made. And then you'll insert the threaded inserts into those, and then I'll insert the lag screw end of this into the end of the birch logs that I cut, and then the legs will just kind of screw in like that. That's a working plan anyway. So we'll secure these blocks to the table first. Normally I'd set my drill press up to get the depth right, but I don't know, it just seems like a hassle to try to move the whole kit and caboodle over there and get set up. So I'm just going to figure out the depth of this and then put some tape around that, around the drill bit. And I'll just know to drill to the end of the tape and that will be sufficient. All right, to get these threaded inserts now, I pre drilled the holes. And they have this tool you can buy for 10 bucks, or you can just find a 3 8 inch bolt. And I put two nuts on there, twisted them together that way to keep the nuts from spinning. Oh. And then, try to go in. I'm just going to screw the bolt into the end of the threaded rod. And I got a socket the same width as that. And we're just going to get this set in there. Then the battery will die. <laughs> of course. Use this drill while that battery's charging. So here's the table with the uh, legs on. I put a, uh, a coat of uh, oil-based poly on it. And so the idea is it'll work. You know, it'll, it'll store like this, or this size, take the legs off it, and then open it up like that. And I can throw in these different leaves like this, and make it bigger. 
Might put some latches on there to hold it tight. And uh, I also might put some dowels uh, in here like you usually have with leave tables to sort of lock it all together. I don't have any dowels right now. So, but I want to be able to get it the right height. So we're going to take it out to the bus and uh, not the right height, but the, the exact width of, that I need for the increments. So I'll take it out to the bus. Test that out. But that's kind of what it looks like. All right, so I attached the uh, face frame here to the front. This is how I envision it working. We'll see if it works. So if it's just sort of Julie and I hanging out, we can do this. And then this table unhooks. Slides down like that. This is temporary, temporary cushions. I haven't got the new ones in yet. I need something already, I realize. Hold this up. I just want to come down. These are the table legs. Dinner time. And bedtime. So I think it will it appears to work. <laughs> uh, I think the, the big question to remain will be, you know, I don't know, would that take me three, four minutes maybe to uh, pull it all the way out? You know, will it be kind of more of a pain to uh, pull a table out and screw those legs in um, or just sit with your plate on your lap? I don't know. That'll be the big question, but it, was, it looks like it'll certainly work. So I'll, I'll keep you posted. So that's our pull out couch table video. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, put them in the comments or suggestions. Always open those, put those in the comments as well. Uh, like, subscribe, do all those things that you do. Certainly appreciate having you along for the ride. So um, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.